Occasionally, an event occurs of such significance that it forever changes the way you perceive life itself, as though a veil has been lifted and the clarity and purpose of your life become obvious. In November of 1993, such an event occurred for my family and I. I was one of the Native American children adopted at birth and removed from the reservation system. As fate would have it, I was raised by a wonderful family and grew up in southwest Minnesota. I lost both adoptive parents in 1987. It was then that my wife, Kathy, discovered my adoption papers that had been hidden for years. On Thanksgiving Day, 1993, I was reunited with my biological Lakota family. Neither of us had known the other had existed all those years. So began our incredible journey back into Native America. This is our story. Thank you for joining us this week on Hidden Heritage. Recently, we were in Denver, Colorado, and met up with a couple of Native entrepreneurs that are redefining the spirit of Native America. Cato Solutions is the name of the company. The tribal members are from the Cato Tribe of Oklahoma and the Winnebago Tribe of Nebraska. Join us now as we take a look at the success story behind Cato Solutions. Well, Cato Solutions is a commercial office products company and we focus on office products on the national level. We compete against the big boxes. We also do f commercial furniture. We do uh, promotional products and uh, we'll do printing. Uh, we'll do IT uh, services and supplies. We try to focus on uh, what customers, whether they be corporate America, Fortune 500 uh, companies, uh, the federal government and tribal nations throughout the country, what they need for their office environment. I started Cattle in 1990 and uh, we started as a furniture company. Uh, a small portion of our business at that time was office products. As the office products industry started evolving and consolidating, uh, it created the big boxes, which were Depot, Staples, Office Max, and a slew of others. And uh, I felt that any time uh, industry consolidates, it creates an opportunity for a niche player. And so I had to figure out a way how to compete against the big boxes. And we do, we can compete with price. We can compete with uh, more than compete with service and compete with technology. 90% uh, of our business is over our e-commerce platform. She's done is because they just- In Native America, most positive stories don't make the headlines. News in Indian country many times dwells on tribal politics, reservation problems, and casinos. It's time that success stories like Cattle Solutions get more national mainstream attention. Business article about ergonomics in the workplace. Uh, a good example of ergonomics, I'm 6'4", and uh, somebody else that does the same task might be 5'6", uh, or 5'2". Or so why should we have to set at the same size desk when we're doing different tasks, or the same task, but we're all different heights? So I specialized in ergonomics, and th that business uh, was very successful. We started doing office products furniture, or office products uh, supplies, and uh, that business grew and, and evolved, and uh, I recognized that the industry was consolidating down, and that's when I realized that uh, I think any time the industry consolidates down, it creates a niche opportunity for a niche player. Well, it was interesting when I asked Don about how Cato Solutions got its start. Like every other story, it had its origins with a simple idea and a lot of heart and soul. In our culture, the real success is being able to thrive out there in the mainstream. Hey, do you guys sell office products? Mm -hmm. So he goes, sure, I can do that for you. Mm -hmm. We have some fortune. 500 companies. We sell the federal government nationwide, and then we sell tribal nations throughout the country also. I refer to myself as an Indianpreneur instead of an entrepreneur. I grew up in Oklahoma, went to Oklahoma University on a football scholarship, and uh, played football for a couple years, then went to the service, and went back to college for uh, a couple years. Uh, sports was a 
a big influence on my life because of the discipline it taught me. So I think that's really helped me in uh, the business endeavors. Well, I think it's, it's, it's people. We've, a lot of our employees have been with us for seven years, 10 years, 12 years, 14 years. Uh, we have a, a focus, a niche, and we, we don't do the shotgun approach. We, we totally focus on, on what we do very well. Uh, we can out-service the big boxes, and service is critical in, uh, in office products. Um, in the late 90s, I, I made a huge investment in my company and decided to put a big emphasis on our e-commerce platform. And I felt that if, if we could teach the corporate America or tribal uh, users or the federal government users to order online instead of placing a phone call and or faxing it in order, that uh, it, it, would, it would allow us to compete with the big guys. At, at that time, the big boxes, probably 10 or 15 percent of their business was over the internet. And we were 60 percent, 80 percent, and today we're, we're over 90 percent of our businesses over our e-commerce platform. I knew Dawn from the community. I, I worked at U.S. West. U.S. West was one of the telecom companies, and because I was director of community relations there, I had a lot of input into the communities that we served. And then, being native, of course, then I did a lot of a lot of work and a lot of community relations with the native community. And that's when I first became acquainted with Don at Caddo. And um, when when U.S. West decided to sell to one of the the other companies, I decided to leave the company at that time. And then Don came to me with an offer that I couldn't refuse. And the offer was. You know what, I can't pay you D what you're worth, which was less than half of what I was making, but I can make sure that you're gonna have a great time while we build this company together. And that was, that was all I needed to hear. I'm not about making money. I'm, I'm all about making cattle a success. And, and Don talked earlier about perception versus reality, and that is so true. It's, it's the perception out there is that we can't do it. And, and my goal and my passion is to show them that we can. And being a native company, Absolutely. We can do it. We are doing it. And we're disproving that perception every single day. I'm of the Bear Clan people and I was given a name by an elder in the Bear Clan and he named me Bear Woman. I think my specialty would be just, I'm just as passionate as Don is about the success of this company. So I mean, he's got 11 years on me in the company. I've been here for nine. And I, I've, I've captured his dream and I'm living his dream and I'm living his passion. And I think that that makes it great. I mean, we are a great team. I can, I mean, we're almost to the point now where I can finish his sentences and I know what he's thinking. You know, it's kind of like a, a business marriage, if you will. And my passion is, and in, in my drive, and my skill is that I, I can get out in front of people and I can talk to people. I stand up in front of people and people can feel the passion that I have for what I do, what I'm saying, and, and what I believe in. I've got a lot of connections. I've done a lot of business in the corporate world, and I'm connected in, in Indian community. And so I think it was just a great marriage of, of, of two, you know, from the, cult, from, the, from the business background to a small business background, corporate America to, to Indian America. I can tell that just in the five minutes we've been in here. <laughs> okay, well, we take really pride in the catalog. Every year we produce a new catalog, and this catalog contains over 25,000 products, and that's a huge catalog. And let me just make it simple for you so you can understand. If you walk into an Office Depot, we carry all those products in here, and we deliver those products next day. Or we take pride in our catalogs. Every year, it seems to our customers, they become a collector's items because they never know from year to year what artists will be featured. But what we do is that we look for and identify a native artist to design the cover of our catalogs. And this year, we worked with Louis Gong, and he's from Alaska Native Tribe, and he's up in the Northwest. And so he's got some coastal art throughout the catalog. And we give the artist the inside back cover to show their picture, their website, anything that we can do to help them in their business and in their journey as a Native artist. Right. Our catalogs have over 25,000 products in them. They weigh 10 pounds. 
10 pounds, and they have over 25,000 products. So if you were to go into Office Depot or an Office Max or one of those big giant stores, that's the same kind of product that we carry in our catalog. The difference is you do it online and we ship next day. You don't have to leave your office to get your supplies. Come on in, guys. Thank okay, you just to walk in. in. Come on. <laughs> yeah, everything I have is bare. One of the joys of hidden heritage is always finding out the story behind the story. What it is that drives these successful entrepreneurs on. What it was when they were young that inspired them. That thing that made them rise above the others. Rise above the oppression and the dysfunctions that are so common in our culture. I enjoyed the response that Dee gave me when I asked her about what it was like in the early days. Something that inspired her on. As, as, as a little child, I was, and this is a long I was sitting at the reading desk and we were reading in a circle and it came my turn to read. But because I had been in school all day, even though the rest of them had only been there half a day because I had to walk to school two miles with my brothers and sisters and sit and wait until my class started in the afternoon, I was very tired as a four-year-old. And so I remember, and if you can remember this, four years old, I was sitting there at the table and it was my turn to read and I had fallen asleep. Well, the, uh, the kindergarten teacher got up, went into the kitchen, got an ice cold pitcher of water, and threw it over my head. Well, that has to make an impact. Though. Yeah, it impacted me still today. Yeah. It impacts me. And so I knew right then and there, there was an epiphany that happened. The, the people that didn't look like me, or, the, or if I didn't look like them, then there was an automatic perception that I wasn't as smart. I could, wasn't near as capable, and definitely I couldn't do what they could do. And so from that moment on, I decided, was I going to be a victim as a four-year-old, and then I grew up, or was I, was I going to be a conqueror? You know, I, uh, I believe that uh, if, you, if you create an environment in your workplace and uh, that you're, you're going to succeed, uh, I think it's important to create an environment uh, where family is a priority. So uh, if some of our employees, if they need to uh, uh, bring their child to work, they do, it's okay. Um, if there's a special event in the family uh, environment, uh, we want we encourage them, we want them to take off, and we'll work around it. They just have to let us know. It, it, if you keep the family values up there as a priority, I, I think your employees are going to be happier. We still have to be competitive on, on salaries, which we are, but uh, we try to uh, create that environment. Uh, and I think if you, if, if you, I always tell our employees that uh, when you walk in in the morning, you have to walk in with a smile uh, in your voice. And uh, when you leave, you know, leave with that smile. And if you do that, uh, I think that's important. Uh, treat your workers and, and a, uh, co-workers in an honest way. And be honest. If you make a mistake, it's okay. Uh, correct it and we'll try to find out you know what causes the problem uh, perception corporate America some of the bigger corporations and some of the big uh, federal agencies their perception is a small business can't compete against the big boxes their perception that a minority company can't compete against a, a normal business either we're under finance and in many cases we are or we don't have the infrastructure in place, well, we can't compete. Their perception is not our reality. Uh, we can't compete against the big boxes. We'll compete with price, we'll more than compete with service, and we'll compete with technology. Uh, financing is very tough today. And uh, so the financial aspect is, is, is very tough for a small business. And I, I think with if you're gonna do business with tribes, uh, Sometimes their perception is not the reality of, of Caddo because we can't can compete. Uh, sometimes we're better off not saying we're a Native American company. Uh, 
because of their perception. Sometimes if you're a Native American company, you're, you're not gonna be able to uh, compete. And they, they think that uh, you're gonna mess up or you're gonna lose. Uh, so it's a little bit, it's, a, it's tough at times. You have to uh, really make sure they understand that we do have the infrastructure in place and uh, we have the people in place uh, we have the financial structure in place, uh, and we'll compete against the big boxes in our industry. Don has a unique perspective when it comes to speaking to Native American youth. Because of his success and his drive, he has a way to connect with them that allows them to see past some of the problems on the reservations. His story gives them inspiration. I think I tried to make sure they understood that uh, it's okay to be successful. It, it's okay to uh, be a leader and uh, not be a follower. Uh, it's okay if somebody wants a three-car or four-car garage and you want to live in a brick home. It's okay that if you want your, you know, if, if you want to play sports and, and go beyond and you want to go to college, that, you know, it's okay to do that. And you don't have to be, a artist. You don't have to be a, a crass person. It's okay if you are, but if, if you want to go into business and be a businessman, if you want to be an entrepreneur, you can become, uh, if you want to go to work for a corporation, uh, it's okay to do that. Well, my next question for Dee was when she was young, who inspired her? Who were the inspirations that made her want to succeed? What was it, the one thing that she saw that she could hang on to that made her want to be successful in life? Yeah. Rise above the ordinary. <laughs> wow. That's a very difficult question, because right now I can't think of anybody. I mean, my mom, but she was a single mom. She raised seven children by herself. Uh, I saw my dad every, every year, once a year. Um, both parents were born and raised on the Winnebago Reservation. And my father was an alcoholic at age 14. And as such, he didn't have a very high opinion of himself. He had very low self-esteem. And so when, when we would see him, which would be once a year, then um, he was, he, he was, had so, so ashamed of himself that he would, instead of walking in a front door, he would climb out the back window. You know, everything I do today is, is try to make him proud. You know, that, we, we break that cycle. You know, I don't drink. I'm not an alcoholic. I've never drank in my life. You know, I stay far away from that because I saw what it did and I felt the effects of that growing up as a child. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> There's a bear. Here's a bear. <laughs> in the culture, There's I, believe, a bear. I believe that the bear means strength. The bear does mean means strength. strength. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they named her correct. It's fun. It's absolutely fun because what happens is the giants, they get very comfortable in what they think they can do in their ability. And then that's when you attack. That's when they're most vulnerable is, is when they, you know, they become too confident in their ability and they don't care so much about customer service. They don't care that it's important to answer the phone every time it rings with a live voice. As a matter of fact, I mean, I dare you to call any one of the big guys and see if you get a live voice when, they, when you call. Here at Cattle, you get a live voice 99.9% .9 of the time. And people still like that because what is about business, it doesn't matter in this age of technology, it really doesn't matter. We are people and we are in the people business and people do business with people they know. And how do they know people unless you, you're out there and you're talking to people and you're answering your phones and, and it's relationship buying, relationship selling. And that's, that's where we excel. You know, our, our competitors go out to get your business. They really do. They will come out. They will whine. They will dine you. They will do everything. They will give you all kinds of products just to get you. And then once they've got you, that's it. They think they have you forever. And unfortunately, a lot of time that's true. But with us, we, we have the completely different philosophy. We go all out to keep your business. So we constantly are communicating with our customers. What can we do? What do you need? We have a great idea for you. We, we look at opportunities to save you money. I don't know how many competitors go out there and look at opportunities to decrease their sales. But, but we do that because it's about building customer loyalty. And I've, th the same dream is to become a national, truly national, tribally owned company. 
You know, it's, it's once we become a tribally owned company, there is no stopping us. With, with the tribe behind us and, be, and becoming um, all the opportunities that are afforded to tribal companies, we're going to take advantage of every single one of those opportunities. The barriers that are in front of us right now, every one of those barriers are going to be overcome once we become a tribally owned company. It's, it, and then the exciting part of this is that we partner with the tribe. And then the legacy carries on. So Don leaves, Dee leaves, and then it's it's tribally owned. And then their then their leaders become up, and they they start running the organization. I mean, it's all about passing it on, and and giving back, and and assuring you know sustainable economic development of future for the for our, our partner tribe. And so that's what we're looking at. That's the excitement. I mean, how how can it get any better than that? You know, every child is special. Every single child, whether you're Native, Hispanic, African American. Asian, whatever, it doesn't matter. Every child is special. But like you said, and before, Native American, there's there's not very many of us. I don't know what the new census numbers are, but I know at the last census, you know, we represented less than 1% of the total population of our homeland. And so that's that's what's unique. That's what's awesome. And that's what's different about being Native. And it's capitalized on being Native. I mean, it's like, I am proud to be a Native American. I can tell you what, growing up, wasn't very nice to be native. I mean, there were a lot of people, my parents, me. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't a very positive role model. There wasn't anything being positive about being native, and and I think right now the kids you need the kids need to capture that, and capitalize on that. Everybody wants to be native. Everybody says, "Wow, that's great." You know, I think I am because my great great grandmother had to be a part of this tribe. I mean, and that's awesome, really. Seriously, I know we talk about that and we joke about that, but everybody wants to be us. And so when you think about it, why do they want to be us? It's because we're different and we're a good different because of the values that we have, because we've never, doesn't matter what's happened 200, 300 years ago, we're still here, we're still fighting, we're still together and, and we still have those values, you know, caring, giving back, um, humble, honesty, ethical. I mean, those are inherent. Those are not necessarily learned. Those are inherent. Those were passed down to us. I think that's part of our makeup of being Native. And I, you know, go out there and conquer the world because you are different, because you are Native. You know, you can do it and you are doing it and stay in school. <laughs> I, think, I think America needs to recognize the service of Native American people, even to a, comp- to, a, to a country that didn't even recognize them, didn't even give them a right to vote, didn't even treat them with respect that they deserve, but they were still out there fighting. We would love for you to call. Call 1-800-442-2336, or you can check us out on our website, which is located at www.cadosolutions.com, www.cadosolutions.com. Call today, and you'll get a live voice, a live Native American voice. We're very proud of the crew at Cato Solutions for what they've been able to accomplish over the years and contribute to our culture. Join us now for our closing segment, Brulee, live from RFD-TV Theater in Branson, Missouri.